Let's talk about NVIDIA's RTX graphics cards, specifically ray tracing in 2020. Has it really panned out to what we thought it would be? Amazing graphics, great performance, or are we a little bit disappointed, kind of like how we are with SLI? Well, let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Like my content, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. What do you think about ray tracing? Is it just kind of gimmicky or do you think it's gonna be an important technology? So I have here in my hand the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. By all accounts, this is an absolutely stunning GPU with amazing graphic performance. I mean, it really beats the last generation by a wide margin even though I still consider the 1080 Ti to be the GPU of the decade, and I've made a separate video on that. But in terms of new technology, this is really amazing. And as soon as it was announced in August of 2018, Nvidia made a big deal about ray tracing. While they didn't say that the frames per second performance, generally the metric that we use to distinguish differences between generations, um, you know, what's faster between generations. The best way to see it is to see, all right, this GPU might get 20 to 30% more or 10% in some games, but Nvidia didn't really play that game. They really went after ray tracing and they said that the ray tracing importance was, you know, much, much different than the previous generation. It was gonna be a new technology. Part of that was to kind of mask that even though this 2080 Ti is a beast of a graphics card, it didn't completely eclipse the 1080 Ti and the previous Titan. The 1080 Ti up till today still remains a great GPU. Um, it's not like the technology is outdated. So Nvidia needed to jump on something else and that was ray tracing. Now, when this was announced, along with ray tracing, they also said NVLink. As you can tell right here on the GPU, NVLink is basically the newer version of SLI. That's when you put more than one GPU together. Back in the day, you could put four GPUs together and you could get you know, a nice scale in performance um, across games that would support it. Then it went down to two GPUs and now we still have two GPU SLI or NVLink. NVLink basically just has more bandwidth than SLI ever did. But honestly, I haven't really seen the benefit of that. I did a separate video talking about SLI versus NVLink and if it's still a factor today. And I really think it isn't. It's mostly just for the looks. And when you're dropping this much money on a GPU, I don't really think most people are gonna care to do it for the looks. It might be better just to slam this vertically um, like this in order to be able to see it that way. You know, the old school way was to have two GPUs, you know, to look better aesthetically, but now you can just do a vertical setup and that's gonna look more than good enough. So now ray tracing is basically how the game is gonna show you light. Um, and the idea behind it is that ray tracing is gonna be able to do a lot more realistic lighting that's gonna be a lot more fluid and organic. So that way the programmers don't have to program it in and spend more time. In theory, it works really well, and there are different levels of this. There's also gonna be shadows, and, and generally, you know, visually, like if you see a puddle of water glistening, um, generally it's supposed to look a lot better. Um, and when they first came out, not too many games supported it. You know, maybe games like Battlefield Five and things like that, and it had a huge performance penalty. So with that huge performance penalty, right off the bat, people got a little bit this way. It's like, all right, we have this new technology, to be honest, the difference visually isn't that much. Um, I'm gonna play Battlefield 5 here for you to take a look, um, as well as you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, a couple more games support ray tracing like Control, and in the future there are more games coming. But when this first came out, and even up till now, uh, it's like, yeah, sometimes it looks a little better. You see the shimmer in the light, like they did the Quake 2 um, remake with all ray tracing performance, and it does look really cool. You get to see how the light reflects, and it looks really realistic and fluid, but the performance penalty initially was massive, and now with different patches and updates, they've definitely made the performance less of a hindrance. Um, you're getting more FPS performance now than you were in the beginning, but you're still definitely gonna get a lot less than if you just have everything on ultra or high. Um, some games can be as high as 50% performance penalty in frames per second. A lot of games seem to be between 
20 and 30 percent so let's say in battlefield 5 if you're usually getting 100 frames per second you may get you know maybe 20 to 30 frames less some games are a lot less optimized and their engine just requires more processing power so they're going to be a lot bigger of a performance penalty some games if you were getting like 70 or 80 fps you may get 30 or 40 now and maybe like a 50 percent penalty so this 2080 Ti is extremely powerful. It can really push some frames. And I'm playing this on an Acer Predator monitor, 4K, HDR, 144 hertz, definitely one of the best monitors you can get now, as well as ones that are gonna require the most performance from your GPU, just because 4K is hard enough to push, but now we're doing HDR, um, we're doing 144 hertz, even though I have it set to just 120 hertz, because 144 hertz give you a lot of that chroma subsampling in the, you know, it's just not optimal yet, but it's a fantastic monitor that requires a lot of power. So you couple that with having tracing at 4k and you're going to have a pretty big performance penalty in a lot of games um, you know some games you'll be lucky to hit 60 frames per second but a few games you will get more um, like for example i was playing tomb raider over here and i was getting well over 60 frames per second the game is very playable with ray tracing on um, battlefield 5 is now also you know it's very playable at 4k with the 2080 ti and ray tracing on in the beginning it really wasn't so in 2020 ray tracing looks a lot to me like sli and nvlink did for years i mean it's a new technology that nvidia touts as not only giving you better performance but better visuals i mean for years sli you were able to you know do multiple cards and scale your performance just to get more out of whatever monitor you're running and hardware setup than you would with just one gpu now ray tracing to me, it's starting to look a lot like the fiasco with SLI and the support that wasn't there. Because even though NVIDIA really touted ray tracing as being the wave of the future, honestly, even in 2020, to answer the question, um, it's definitely not there yet. Um, yeah, game support it. Frames per second performance has improved, but not every game supports it. And a lot of new games coming out in the future most likely won't support it right away. It's going to take a couple of patch updates for them to be able to support it. So what's the reason of getting something like this, a very expensive 2080 Ti card, when you can still pick up a 1080 Ti that's not going to have ray tracing, or some of them are going to have a very limited version of ray tracing, which it's definitely not recommended. There's no reason to really rush to it yet, because only a couple of games really offer it. And honestly, from playing around with these games and really taking a look visually on the stunning 4K monitor, where I'm really going to be able to see if it's good or not, I can't notice that big of a difference, or at least not enough. If I didn't have this hardware and I was playing on a 1080 Ti or something like that, I think I'd be more than happy. And of course, yeah, you can upgrade for the extra frames per second. The 2080 Ti definitely is going to give you better performance across the board, but at a very increased cost. So I wouldn't do it just for ray tracing. I think while maybe ray tracing is going to be huge in the future, as more games support it, you're going to have better optimized lighting, everything's gonna look beautiful with the shadows. It's really not there yet. And there's a chance it may end up being like SLI. It's a technology that's really touted as being awesome. But then SLI and NVLink are almost pretty much useless nowadays. I even made a video talking about how it's more for the aesthetics. And unless you wanna spend some money to get two of these for basically no reason, it's better to put that money elsewhere. Um, it's unfortunate because especially with the 4K and ultra wide monitors we have now that are high refresh rates, we could really take advantage of scalable performance in a card like a 2080 Ti. But unfortunately, while there are games that support it, and of course in some games you will get better performance, it's not enough to justify it. It's You really have to you know nitpick what games you're going to play if you're going to be doing SLI or NVLink, and it's just not worth it. So I really hope that ray tracing doesn't end up in the same manner that SLI did. Now, of course, we're talking about two completely separate and different technologies. And V-Link and SLI is just a way to give you more performance sort of combining two GPUs. And ray tracing is a completely different type of technology. Um, it's meant to give you, you know, better, layout, better lighting, better shading, um, better shadows. So they're not comparable in terms of technology. I'm just saying they're comparable in terms of the effect they're having on the gamer. Um, 
not really noticing the difference if you invest in the technology. If you get SLI, you're not seeing a huge difference nowadays. If you have ray tracing, you're not seeing a huge difference. I think the bread and butter still is regular FPS gaming. Even if you have a 10 series GPU, most of your best performance is definitely going to be with regular games and most likely ray tracing off. Yeah, turn it on, you may get a little more visuals, but honestly, I haven't noticed enough of a difference that would make me really go for that. And if it's gonna give me a big performance penalty in a lot of games, I'd rather just turn it off and play the games regularly. That's really my opinion. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you like my content, leave a comment below. What do you think of ray tracing? You think it's gone the way of the dodo bird, as in it's gonna be extinct in the future like SLI is? Or do you think there's enough merit in the technology that it's gonna be well-developed and not branched off into something else? Leave a comment below, let's talk about it. All right, and I'll see you guys on the next video.